So we now understand why the rodents look different from NDVI and what that is telling us about how the past is influencing the future. But this doesn't really help us with the rodents if what we really want to understand is exactly how many lags in the past are really influencing that value that we're seeing. This graph seems to suggest that lags all the way back to almost a year and a half are influencing the value that we're seeing. But because we know now that this is an autoregressive process, we know that that's not actually true, that a lot of these are just echoes. So where did the real autoregressive signals end? Um, how far back in the, in the past? There's a function that we can use in R called a partial autocorrelation function, or PACF, that disentangles this for us. And what it does is it takes the correlations you see at a short lag, at, say at a lag of one, and factors that out when it calculates those correlation coefficients for each of the longer and longer lags. So let's go see how this works in R and see what our real time lag is for the rodent data. So let's use the PACF function that we just talked about on the rodent data and, and see how this changes how the autocorrelation structure looks. So we're going to use the uh, PACF function and then we're going to give it our rodent time series object. So one of the first things I want to point out before we start interpreting this, unlike with the ACF function that we've been working with, this first bar here on our, on our graph is actually that time lag of one, not the time lag of zero. This can be very confusing if you're not paying attention to the fact that that axis is, that X axis has changed. The other thing to note, of course, is that now that echoing structure is totally gone. And what the PACF is telling us is that almost everything we were seeing in the ACF function is that echoing effect of a really strong correlation um, at a time lag of one month. And that was creating correlation structures um, within our data. All these other time lags now are really not significant uh, and not worth thinking about, especially in comparison to that super strong correlation structure that's going on from one month to the next. And that makes sense in my system. Um, it's what I would expect. If you have a large number of rodents in one month, you are likely to still have a large number of rodents in the next month. If you have a very small number of rodents one month, you are going to have a very small number of rodents the next month. They don't change that fast. As I mentioned before, the forecast package, which I had you install and that we used last time, has a lot of nice functions kind of bundled together so that you don't have to walk through all of this uh, one by one and some nice visualization tools associated with it. So we're going to use forecast library. I'm going to type that in now and look at its output. The function we're going to use from the forecast library is called TS display. And uh, let's go ahead and give it the rats time series object. Oops. Let me tag this forecast package so everybody knows where that's coming from and then maybe spell it correctly. Everything that's being displayed here is something that we've already talked about. It's just a nice function of being able to uh, see what the observed data looks like um, on this top graph here. So here's the rodent time series. Here's our ACF function. And then we also see on, on the right over here, the PACF output, which again confirms that this structure on the left really is being driven by really strong uh, correlation structure on the right. What I want you to do now is to run the NDVI data and the RAIN data set through the TS display function uh, and look at that output.